Hello everybody, this is William. This is Bushido Gamer. Game with passion and game with honor. It has been a while. So, just to get everybody caught up. Uh, last week I didn't do any videos because I was over at E3, which was an amazing event. Uh, I've been going there since 2012, so I had a lot of fun. Um, so I didn't do any videos last week because I was going back and forth between that. Uh, and you know, getting some networking done, meeting some people, playing some games, of course, like that too. And it was it was good. It was a good event. So this week, I am back. Uh, I would have actually did some stuff earlier. Had some computer problems. That has been resolved, and I am back now with some new games. So my last convention I went to, other than E3, I went to the Strategic Con convention, which was Game X, uh, over in LAX at the Hilton LAX. And I picked up nine new games. That's right, nine new games, which means I have more games to review because I was running out. In fact, actually, no, I didn't run. I was running out. I did run out. So now I got nine new games, and this is one of them. This game right here is called Troll Holla, kind of like a like Trolls and Valhalla. So Troll Holla by Z Man Games. So this was a uh, I checked this out. It was a it's a pretty cool game. Uh, think of it, it's a it's a board game, and it can play four players, and you guys are basically trolls who are who decided to stop hiding under bridges to collect tolls, and instead you're gonna melt up in your in your troll Viking type ships, and you'll go out there and you'll try to and pillage and plunder, and get your and get your riches that way. So let's go into the setup for the game. So there's a couple of things in this in this game you want to look at. Uh, for one, so you have four different, uh, four different main boats. The main boats are basically each of the player, I guess you can say your player card or your player boats. And they are separated by color, so you have red, you have green, you have uh, actually red, green, there's a brown, and then there's a blue. You can know the colors because of a little color outline along the outside of each one of the boats. So that's where you know which color you're at. Me particularly, I like green, it's my favorite color, so I'm going to choose green for this one. And we're going to go with blue. Uh, we're going to assimilate a two-person two game, okay? So we're going to put the other two, these other two parts away. So, aside from those, with each player boat, you also get these player tokens. Now, each one is color-coded. So we have our orange, we have our, our red, you have your blue, and you have your green. So if you chose, for example, in this case I chose the blue, then I'm going to take all of the blue tokens with that one. I'm going to take all the green ones with this one. The rest of these are going to go back into the box because I'm not going to need right now. Okay? Then, these other tokens right here, which are kind of like um, octagon tokens, they have trolls on them. These are the, uh, these are the, the head trolls forces. So we're going to do these. We're going to put these over here on the side. Now depending on how many players you're playing, if you're playing a two-player game, then you're going to actually cover up the first of these uh, the first of these five ships that are on the left-hand side. So when these ships are, are filled up with trolls, then you go ahead and you share the head troll's plunder. So anything that he's, any of the loot that he's gotten is going to be shared among the players based off of who has the most pizza in there. If you're playing with more people, then there'll be five spaces. If you're playing with less people, like two of them, then two of them are already taken up by his trolls, and then the other ones are basically the other players. Okay. The other thing you're going to do if you're playing a two-player game is you have a, five, a plus five and a plus ten. The plus ten is for the first place person, the plus five is for the second place person. In a two-player game, you, the second place person doesn't get, doesn't get a, a separate score. So you just co you cover up that plus five, and, that's, and then you just go with the plus ten. Okay, so we're going to put these over here off to the side. Now, the next thing you're going to do, you have three sets of cards. Now, these cards are the weather guides. Okay, so these weather guides, you have the wind, you have a storm, you have a sun. Each one does a different thing. Like, for example, the storm one you choose a location where you have uh, where there are trolls at and you wipe them off the board and you send them back over to the starting places. The sun, the sun one, allows you to to do one additional uh, I guess you can say one additional deployment of a troll. 
they should put another troll in play because you only get two per turn. And then the two storm ones, you can flip one ship uh, or one stack of trolls in the sea space. So you flip it upside down. So it means like these are, these little ships that are sitting on the lightens, you would basically flip it upside down like this. Yeah. <laughs> You'll flip it upside down so that way the head of the ship is on this side and the tail of the ship is on this side. There is an importance to this because it's a little strategy to it. So we're going to go into that later on, okay? So we're going to take our, our cards and I'm just going to put them right here on the side. Now, the next step you're going to do, you know, I want to put my, I want to put our ships right here so we can see where they're at. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to place our three ships. So these are the three ships. You have a yellow ship, a red ship, and a blue ship. These right here is where you're going to be uh, loading up your trolls in order to take, to sell them around the different islands in the, in the map. So, you want you can do these as random or whatever kind of situation you do, but one thing you want to do is you don't want to put them like this where they're all next, like all adjacent to each other. You want to kind of spread them out. So I'm going to put it like this. So we got one here, one here, one here. So in three different spots of the of the board. Okay. All right. Now the last part as part of the setup. You have a nice little bag. I don't, you know, I'm not I'm not exactly sure if this bag came with it. I think they bag did come with it. This was a used game when I got it. So who knows. So in this bag, there's a couple of there's a couple of different tiles, and there are six different tiles. So I'm going to, go ahead and separate them right quick so you can see what they are. Oh, there's one brown one, green, orange. There we go. Okay. Scratch that. There's actually seven different types of tiles inside here. So let's go through these tiles so I can explain to them. So the different tiles, and they each have a value that's on your ship. So if you look at the ship here, those little, those little spots right here, from this one all the way over to here, if you look at the shield underneath it, it has a value. So it goes from one, two, three, four, five, up to six. So each one of these tiles will relate to one of these ones. Like for example, this is the Billy Goat one, it's worth one point. So when you have, so when you when you're doing your final scoring, you're gonna get your points based off of how many of each one of these tiles you get. And there are some bonuses if you have one of each as well. Uh, there's another bonus if you have if you're the first person to get uh, a stack of four of them and things like that too. So when you're going when you're grab when, you, when you're grabbing or <laughs> grabbing that's not when you are grabbing loot from the land, you're going to be you're going to be picking up these different tiles. So we're gonna explain how this works. Now, to begin with, if you were in a two-player game, you are going to take two of each of these tiles, which would be a total of 14 tiles, and you're going to remove them from the game. So let me get my last one. So we're going to take 14 of these tiles and remove them from the game. They are not going to be in play. Now, in other games, you're not going to have to do this. They're going to be, they're all going to be in play. The game ends when you run out of these tiles. When you have no more tiles to draw from, then the game ends right there and then you go into your points. So first we're gonna do, give it a good little shake. All right, so on the map, you have your, your ships where they're located at first. And then you have these islands. On each island, there's a little spike, there's a little space. You may not be able to tell from the camera, but there's a little space on each island that where you're gonna put one of these tiles. So we're gonna grab tiles at random, and we're gonna fill up each one of the different spaces on here. Now, if you get, a, if you get a, a situation where there's two of the same color tile, that's okay. It's okay because it's random, and not the same person will get the same tile twice or in some cases they might, some cases they won't. Depends on how I set up. So, let's go ahead and set all these up. So all the islands that do not have a ship on them, you're gonna be placing a tile, one tile on each one of the little spaces on each of those islands. 
Now there are some where in one column there are two spaces. That's fine. That just means that that's an additional tile that that person can, can obtain when it's your turn to go. All right, so we're gonna go open up our bag here. By the way, the Ziploc, the little Ziploc bags, those are not really part of the game. I have those, I got those from, I got, I, they was, some of these were already on here from when I got the game, so I don't think they actually came with the game though. Okay, so now we have our, we have all of our, uh, all of our trolls for our ships, and we have all the things on, on the field all ready to go. One more thing to note, um, the troll tiles that you have, and I'm gonna try to put this as close as I can to the camera so you can see it. They are double sided. So if you look at the first, at the troll tile, you have one side right here where it's a troll, and then you have another side where if you look really closely, it looks like he has a little spyglass. These are double sided because the ones you put in the ships are the one where he doesn't have the spyglass. On the board itself, there are different areas where it looks like it's either a sun, uh, some wind, a storm cloud. Those are areas where you can obtain these little, these cards. So if you put your troll on one of those areas, then you put it with the spyglass because basically it's searching out location, plus it also is giving you a route to take to get to another island to sell your boat. And then you draw a card. Okay, so let's go into the game. All right, so we're going to start with green, just because green is my favorite color. So we're going to start with the green, we're going to alternate back and forth between green and blue. So each turn, you get two things, you, or you get, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to place two pieces on the board. So you're going to go ahead and get two of your troll tiles, and you can choose, either put it in one of the ships, or you can even put it on the board. So I'm going to go and do this, because I want to be able to get something extra later. I'm gonna go ahead and put a spyglass over here on the sun, which gives me a card. And the other one, I'm gonna put on this boat right here. Now, one thing I know about the boat is that on my next turn, if I wanna put another troll in this boat, I cannot put one unless there is a different color troll right next to mine. So like if there's a green one here and, there's, and, I, and I wanna put on the green one, I can't put it right next to the, to, to the one I already have. So if there's another troll, then I can put it apples and them. So it always has to be alternate colors. The same thing with the with the trolls on the different pieces or the different um, um, weather pieces on the board. If you already have your color on there, you cannot put another one on top of that color unless there is a different troll of a different color on top of yours. Because you can't stack them, but they cannot be the same color twice in a row. Okay. So I did my two, and then I got my and I got my card. I'll put it over here. And then the next one is to activate a boat. In this case, you're going to go ahead and roll the little special dice. And this dice has all of the, it has three of the colors, red, yellow, and blue. So you roll it, and whatever color it lands on, that's the color that needs to be, that's the boat that needs to be activated. Now, if that ship is not full, which means that all four slots on that ship is not, uh, is not filled up, then you're going to take one of the troll commanders, Trolls, and you're going to put it on in, that, in one of the empty spaces. Okay, and then that passes your turn, and you go to the next one. So now, blue's turn. So blue's going to take one, and this one here. I'm um, like I said. So I'm going to put this on the spyglass section. I want to put it over the over the uh, the sun, so I can get a card. As soon as you put a card, put your your troll piece over one of those little symbols. You get you pick up a card for that symbol. Okay, and then. With blue, he's going to do a different one. He's going to do another sun one so he can use that. Now, with the cards, if you have two of the same card, you can activate that either before, during, or after you've already made, already placed your, your units. So I've already placed my units, but I'm going to activate these two, spend those, spend those two cards, because I have two sun cards, so I'm going to spend those two sun cards. And if you do two sun cards, it allows me to pick up another piece and now I can put that last piece right here, so I got three on the board right there, okay? Now I'll roll my, roll my, my thing, and it's yellow. Yellow doesn't have anybody on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and put up a, a troll, a troll, uh, a horde commander's uh, troll in there, and then pass turn back to green. So green's gonna go. Now because blue is stacked on top of my green one here, I could go ahead and put one right there to get that card, and I'm gonna go ahead and use it immediately 
to get to be able to add another piece I want to fill up this boat by putting one in here and I'm also going to put one over here okay now I'm going to activate now I'm hoping to activate that red boat so I'm going to row it's a blue boat so I don't get to activate my boat but we put a, a troll piece right here pass turn to the next person so go back to blue again so you can kind of see the idea of how this goes so blue we're going to take one of the storm cards for this one and we're going to put ourselves into the yellow boat right here we're going to go in a row it's a yellow boat yellow boat is not full yet so we're going to fill it up with the last one the last patrol commanders guys go back to green so green is going to do this let me see i'm going to put one in the blue boat and i'm going to take one of the areas here so i'm going to take one of the sun ones right here and row i'm hoping either the yellow or the red can be activated this time. Let's see how it goes. Red. Okay, so now we we uh, hit the we, we activated the red boat. The red boat is full, which means now we can go ahead and move it. So this is how this moves. You have to have a troll on one of the little, on one of the uh, the shipping lines in order to move. So like right now there's no troll over here so I wouldn't be able to move this way because he hasn't scouted out that location. However I do have a troll here and I have a troll here but I can only make one movement. The reason why is because since there's a boat already right here and you follow the lay, you follow the, 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 uh, the sea lines I can't go over here because there's already a boat that occupied with me that's an impossible move. My only move I have would be right here. Now the number the number of trolls stacked on a on a uh, on a on the area also can come into play during this time when you're making your move because let's say this boat wasn't here and it was empty there's only two right here there's three right here this is the this is the optimal one because there's more I think there's more research so I have to, I would take this route instead of this route so in this case I'm gonna go ahead and go this route I'm gonna move my ship over here. Okay, now if you can if you can see right here, for each spot on the ship, there is a spot on the island, and there is a tile on each one of the spots on the island. Okay, so when I look at this, this one's going to go to here. This one's going to go for this guy. This one's going for this guy. This one's going for this guy right here. And I'm going to move my ship down here. So this first one is green. That one's going to be mine, plus this other green one here is mine. This one here is blue. It's going to go there. And this one goes to the Horde Commander. This means that's going to go right here, and you're going to put this loot up here. Okay? Now, my green has a billy goat, and it has the, uh, the farmer. There's a rule with the billy goat. If you get a billy goat on your, on, on, onto your ship, it has it is get it, it's kind of rambunctious, so it actually kicks out another tile. So if you put a billy goat on your on your ship, then one of your other tiles has to be kicked out. Now, if you get this like this, I can go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and put my billy goat in here first because there's that way there's no tiles to kick out, and then I'm gonna put my yellow one on there afterwards. And then these two that are using that ship go back to my pile. For blue, he has the no, blue. Blue has the the uh, the maiden, so that one goes that one and goes back over the pile. Now there's one more, there's two more things we're going to do to, before we finish this turn. So going through this route, we have to clean the route. So we clean the route by taking all the pieces that were on uh, on a, a weather tile when we pass through it, and they get added to the ships for the uh, for the the troll commander, the troll horde guy. Now, once all five of these are filled out, then he shares his treasure. In this case, there's only one treasure. The person who has the most, uh, the most uh, trolls of their color in that area, they get first pick, and then everybody else gets to pick after that one. In this case, there's only one treasure, and Green has two of them. So he, Green's going to take the maiden, add it to a ship, and now all of them, all the pieces go back, and then. The last thing we do, we go through our bag and we refill our land with more loot. Wow, I, I just happened to get all the same color. Okay, whatever, that's fine, that works. Okay, 
So now this ship is empty. This land has been refilled with, with new loot. This path is now clear. And now we go to blue. And blue is going to take his turn. So blue is going to do his two moves. It's going to first put a put one by one person in this blue ship, and it's going to put a person in this red ship just in case. Go ahead and roll the dice. Red. Red is not full, so therefore we put a troll in there. And then it goes to green. Green's going to take his turn. Going to put somebody inside of them one and put somebody inside the blue ship to fill the blue ship out. Roll the dice. Yellow. Yellow is activated. So in this one, there's only one path that yellow can take because there's only one section where there's some, there's some trolls on the, on the field. So it's going to go through this section right here. Pass through here. Go into this, this area here. Which means that these guys get added over here. Okay, now. The first one, the troll commander is going to take the first one because that, that was one of his people. He's also going to take the last one because it's also one of his people, so that loot goes over to there. Green is going to take two of these guys. Blue is going to take one of them. So we're going to take those two, we're going to take the other one, stack them on the, on the main ship, and then add these back to their land and fill up the next player. Okay, we're still going to do two more rounds and then we're going to raise this one so you can get an idea of the game. So he piece it again. Now it goes back to, that was, what, green? Okay, so now it goes back to the blue, to blue's turn. Blue's going to go ahead and make his move. He's going to get a, another storm cart. Save that for later. And then going to take yellow. Roll the dice. Blue is activated, so now in this case, there's two paths that you can take, and they're both basically equal. However, this land has more more plunder in it, more more tiles, so we're gonna go through that route instead. We follow the follow the sea lines, go over here, which means this guy goes over here, which is gonna fill up the the uh, the, the troll commander's uh, area, which means we're gonna do the loot after that too. So now, first one. These two are going to go over to the troll commander because that's one of his guys. Green is going to take the maiden. Blue is going to take the farmer. And green, since it's the last one, there is going to take the maiden. And then these get sent back over to the guy to their areas. And we refill the board again. Two billy goats. Huh? Okay. Now ships over here for the troll commander or field blue has the most of them so blue gets the first pick and blue's actually going to try to go for the uh, for the friar the monk green yeah green's gonna take the same guy there's a reason for it because even though the maiden is worth five and this monk guy is only worth three there is a reason to take more of them because if you fill up, if you're the first one to fill up all of them or get a stack of four, which I think green is really close to it, then you get a little bonus on that too when you, when you do your points. Okay. Now, let's do one more. Oh, that was blue's turn, so green goes. Green is going to take a win card this time. And for the heck of it, it's going to take a sun card. And it already has one sun card, so we're going to activate both those sun cards to be able to drop another person. We're going to drop that one inside the yellow ship. Okay, goes blue. Blue is going to take. Let me see. Okay, blue is going to put this one in red, and let's go ahead and put one in. No, actually, yeah, let's put one in blue too, just for the heck of it. We're going to activate, oh, you know, I forgot to activate that one. Activate this one is red, so actually, let's do this, because I actually missed that whole entire section. We'll do that instead, and just switch us to blue here. Okay, so red actually didn't get activated because it was full. It wasn't It wasn't full at the time, so this is blue's turn. Activates blue, blue ship is not full, put one right there, and then go back to green. Uh, I'm going to show one more card so we can so you can get an idea of, how, of what it does with this one. So we're going to go here and... and uh, we're going to choose the win right here. Get this win card. All right. So this win card. 
I'm going to save on that wind card for the moment. Put my second person on here, which is going to be in the blue, in the yellow ship, because I want to see if it can, if you can get it to work. Yeah. All right. So this is going to row. Yellow ship. Good. This is what I wanted. All right. So yellow ship has two routes. You can't go this way. You can't go this way because the ship's right there. But it could go to either one of these two. Now. Um, if the if the if the yellow is going to take this path over here because it's bigger, here goes what will happen usually. Because blue is right here, it would get this high the, this high value uh, one because this one is actually worth six. Now in the case I could go ahead and just keep it as it is because then I can get this one right here too, but I'm not going to do that because I want to give myself a little bonus. So. Green is going to play his wind card, and with the wind card, what is what it's going to do is it's going to flip one of the um, it's going to flip the boat. So it's going to take the boat and it's going to turn it upside down. So now green instead of blue gets this one. Blue gets the fry right here, and now green will get both of these tiles because that would have went to blue, and then blue would get this one right here. And now the boat's upside down. So we take this. This cow is actually worth six. That's one. That's the reason we want to flip that boat because then we can get the the six point one while blue takes the three point one. And then we also get two of these tiles. And one of them is the is the uh, the monk. And this other card, this other one is the gorg. Uh, it's actually called. Let me see if I can get the actual name for it again. This particular chip is called Grog and Gold. So the Grog and Gold is a wild card type of chip. And I'm going to put this right here so you can see it. So the Grog and Gold chip, this is a wild card. This one, you can actually put it on any one of the spaces you that you want on your, in, on your field, like on your boat. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to put it on the nobleman because that's going to give me that bonus because I'm the first one to fill up all of them. Okay? And that bonus, let's see what that bonus is at again. Yeah. Two player. So I have. Checking one thing on the scoring. Okay, so it's called a plus 10 bonus. The first player to collect one of each of the six types of tiles marked on the game board. So I have one of each, which means that I'll be able to put my token on a plus 10 and get that extra 10 point bonus when we do the scoring. Okay, now the last thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and Oh, we gotta put this. Here it goes out. This one goes to him. He's gonna get that one. And then put these over here. Okay. There we go. Alright, so now let's go ahead and fill up our boat again. And then we're gonna end it right there. Okay, so once the game ends. When you end the game, what you're going to do is you're going to count how many how many uh, of each tile you have on your ship. So in this case, I have one Billy Goat that's one point. These are worth two points, so that's two, four, that's six points there. These are worth three points, so there's two right there, that's six. This wild card is worth four. These are worth five each, and there's three of those, so that's 15. And I have one that's worth six. So you count them up, so we have six, that goes 10, uh, three, four, six, 10, that's 20, 25, 30, 35, 32, and 33. So tile-wise, my green has 33 points, so you're gonna take your token 
and you're going to put it up to 33. Okay, but I also got a plus 10 because I was the first one to have one of each set up, so that busts me over to 43, right? Then for blue, blue counts theirs. Blue has a 6, it goes 10, it's 15. 18 is 21 so there's 21 points and then so he has 21 points so blue is going to put his at 21 now here goes a downside if you have any unused weather cards you minus one point for each one you have so in this case he minus is two he's down to 19 and then that's it so Green one had 43 points, blue had 19, so the game's over right there. Okay, now, um, so this game, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool game. I've only played it with, a, with a two people, so I haven't played it really with four, but I think, I imagine with four, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a, a lot of good gameplay there to it. Uh, I think it actually will work out pretty well. Um, the game itself, let's look, let's go ahead and go into the, uh, into the ratings for it. So, uh, rating wise, gameplay, replay value, fun factor, uh, rules, and a theme. Okay, so gameplay, is it easy to play? Yes, it is actually rather simple to play. In fact, I believe this game is meant for ages, for ages eight and up. So it actually makes for a really good, like a really fun little cool family game. And one thing I gotta tell you guys, um, you know, I, I come from, I do come from the video game genre. I mean, I've been playing video games since Nintendo, like the NES system. Uh, so I grew up playing video games. I didn't really play a lot of board games growing up with my with family, uh, ex except for the main ones like you know maybe now and then some Uno card games and like Monopoly. But I will tell you guys about this. You know, if uh, if there's a, there are a lot of board games out there. The, the, the board game community is enormous. I am not lying at all. It is a huge community. So if you play games, try to play some board games. And most definitely, I would say every family should, should cut themselves off from the electronics, put the tablet down, put the phone down, break out a, get the table out, break out a board game and play because these games are actually pretty cool to play. So this game right here, Eight years on and up is actually really easy to play. So the gameplay, I would give it a five because it is it's actually a quite simple game to play. It's not that complicated to play. Once you once you get through the first round or two, you're okay, no problem. This game is simple. I got it. Right. Um, the fun factor. Uh, it is a really fun game to play. Uh, I would say for this one for the fun factor. Uh, I'd give it a 4.5, no, I'd give it a 5, I'd give it a strong 5 on this one. It is, it is really fun to play it. Uh, I'm going to have to actually give it a 4.5 only because I haven't played it with 4 people. I am, it's, it's kind of hard for me to do that, so I was only playing with me and my wife and I was teaching her how to play it. But still, she had, I think she had some fun with it and it was actually pretty easy to get to play, so it's pretty fun. So, give it a good 4.5 on that one. Replay. I think the game does have potential for a pretty decent replay value. Um, I mean, once you play it one time through, you kind of already know what's going to happen. But this is what actually, yeah, this is the reason why I would actually give this a higher replay value amount, is the fact that there are variants to this game. So one of the variants of this game is the weather tiles. So you have the weather, the weather areas on the board itself, but it actually includes these little set of tiles, which are different weather tiles, so you can mix it up by taking these and randomly putting them around the board, so it's not always the exact same one, it's gonna be different ones, so that does increase the replay. And then you also have another rural variant, variant with the mail, the Maelstrom. Um, if you, with this one, if you play one of each, one wind, storm, and sun cloud, you can summon a Maelstrom, which is a whirlpool, that, transpa that transports all the trolls at sea. So you pick up all the trolls in one area, in one area of sea space, and exchange them with all the trolls of another area, which can work to different advantages and stuff too. And then um, 
Let me see what else is there. And I believe there was one other one. But anyway, um, so this game, I would say the fun factor on it, I would give it a good 4.5 out of 5 on the, four, on the fun factor. Excuse me, not the fun factor, but the replay value. You get about a 4.5 because you can, you you can, I think I, adding those different variants can add to the game and make it a bit more, a bit more enjoyable to play. As well as make it a bit more interesting to play a second time through because now you play with different rules. So the fun factor, now I think final one on the replay is going to be a four. I think the fun, the replay I think we'll play on a four. I because I, even under variance you play it after a few times you kind of already know it. Unless you're playing with new people, then the replay is going to stay at four. Uh, the theme. So the graphics and everything on the board is really cool. It's really lighthearted. It's like it, there, the pictures of all of the uh, of all of the loot the loot tiles that you're going to get. They all have the same face, like they're like they're surprised that you are looting them. So they're like, oh my gosh, you know, like all this like a surprise face. So it looks pretty cool. It look they look cute. You know, the Billy the Billy Goat looks all mean and stuff. Um, I would say the theme of it 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 fits nicely. It looks cool. Uh, it's very friendly, very welcoming. So I'll say this. I'll give it a theme of five because it, it it's a pretty simple theme. It's a pretty nice looking theme. For the last one, the rules. Okay, so. The rule book is a bit of a rule book. It, it does have several pages inside the rule book, but it is not incredibly difficult to root to read through the rules and understand it. Uh, I would I read I read it through it probably one and a half times to really get the gist, and then I just sat down and started playing it until I really got it. So the rules. I think the, the rules are okay. I'm gonna probably give it a I think I'll probably give this one a four, maybe a four point five for the rules. I mean the rules aren't horrible. They're they're pretty they're pretty decent. They're not bad. I've seen worse. But it is a lot to read on the first time, so it does it, it, it is kind of daunting when you first read into it. But actually you know what? I'm gonna give it a four point five. The reason why you know what? I I just remember that in the rule book, on the first page that you go into, page two actually, it even tells you, it actually has a little link. It says to view a video demonstration of Trahala, visit the link at Z-Man Games. Now, I, didn't look at the, I didn't look at the link, but I'm pretty sure that, that the link is probably still there on the site. So because they have that link on there, that bumps them up and give them a 4.5 because that way, sometimes, you know, reading the rule book itself is kind of difficult and you don't get everything out of it. And sometimes it might, it might, you know, leave out something that you think might that you that you think should have been in there, but if you get a video demonstration of it, it gives you a lot more information. So we're gonna keep it like that. 4.5. All right. So this is Trollhalla. It is by Z-Man Games. Um, it is a pretty it is a pretty fun game. I think that you guys will all enjoy it if you try it out. Those of you who are going to the convention in or the strategic kind of convention in. Uh, August September for Labor Day, I will be there. So if you hit me up on Facebook, uh, on our on our Facebook YouTube channel or anything like that, and you want me to bring this game so I can show you it, then you let me know and I will bring this game so I, that I can show you how to play it and we can play it. All right. So the next game, we do have eight more games. I think on the next game, I found a really cool version of Battleship. That, that is themed after the Pirates of the Caribbean. So the next game we're going to do is the Pirates of the Caribbean Battleship. And it is Battleship, but it has a slightly different take on Battleship than the normal Battleship. So I think you guys will enjoy that. So until then, uh, if you, some dates to remember is July 19th to the 21st. Um, Comic Con, I will be over there and I'll, and I'll be running demos of Death of Liberty. Um, I may, I actually might have a couple of copies of Battle of Souls with us as well because I'm planning on bringing that back out and Kickstarter this month. So I will have those. Um, but so if you're in the San Diego area, make sure you stop by. If you're going to Comic Con, make sure you stop by the game room uh, and you'll find me there doing Death of Liberty. So try it out. 
Until then, my friends, honorable gamers, keep gaming with that with that passion and that love and the respect for others as you should. Game with honor and game with, with passion, you guys. Enjoy your gaming, enjoy what you do, and have fun doing it. I will catch you guys next time.